Welcome to this lecture on exempt income. So, let's look at our tax framework. We went and we said gross income, less exempt income, gives us income. So we are currently looking at income, right, and exempt income specifically. So what I wanted to see is very important here, as we discussed also under gross income, please make sure that gross, you see that gross income and exempt income will be shown separately from each other. What does that mean? It means you don't just show income, the net effect. So on the next slide it will be a little bit more apparent what I mean. So for example, how will you answer things in an exam? How should you answer it? So Mr. X receives 10,000 rands in dividends. And we know that dividends are exempt. Okay, And if you didn't, just for now assume that they are exempt. So how would you do it? If dividends are exempt, you cannot say dividends are exempt, it means there's no income tax. You have to do it as follows. You have to first show the gross income effect for the dividends received. So you're showing here, I understand that in terms of section 1, this is included. Then I understand in terms of section 10, that this is exempt. So the net effect is still null, but you have to show these two different steps. So again, guys, remember you are showing that you understand the application of the act. You're not just doing net effects quick high-level accounting or calculations. So what is exempt income exactly? Exempt income then basically means it is amounts of gross income which we want to be exempt. So what does that mean for us while we're on this slide? It means that if you've received dividends of 10,000 rands or let's assume it's any amount or any type of income, some sort of income of 10,000 rands, the exempt income can be 10,000 so that it is null or it can be any amount less than 10,000, like 8,000, for example, so 2,000 is any taxable. It can never be more than the 10,000, so it can't be 11,000, for example, because that will create a negative amount. And if you create a negative amount, that's a deduction. And this is not a deduction, this is amounts of income, gross income, which is exempt. So it can never be more than the gross income. So just be aware that you get two types of exempt income. You get absolute exemptions and partial exemptions. But these are not necessarily the correct names. They could have been better names. So let me explain why. They're talking here not about the types of income. They're talking here about the types of taxpayers. So you get taxpayers which everything is exempt, and you get taxpayers which only some things are exempt. So... Where is everything exempt? It is for things like the government, public benefit organizations, and so forth. Please refer to your psycho ITC exam analysis because most of this is excluded from your syllabus. Partial exemptions, this will apply to majority of companies and individuals where some of your income is taxed and only some of it is exempt. And that is where the majority of our studies in this section will come.